The solar system is our common home, but do we know everything about it? For decades of astronomical research, representatives of mankind have visited only the moon for short periods of time. And after a series of flights, missions to the satellite for many years simply froze. But this is the subject of another video. And now we will talk about electronic aids, thanks to which the Earthlings were able to learn more about the neighboring planets. Hello. If it weren't for automated interplanetary stations, we would still think that Venus is the epitome of the Garden of Eden, and the porous lunar caverns are teeming with fragile selenites. Tiny probes have helped humanity learn about the nature of the great red spot on Jupiter, measure the depth of the Martian Mariner Valley, and find traces of subglacial oceans on the satellites of the giant planets. What automatic stations have become pioneers in the conquest of hitherto unknown locations? Let's start with the nearest object, the Moon. The first to land on its surface was the Soviet apparatus Luna 2, which at the same time became a pioneer probe that visited another celestial body. By the way, the predecessor of Luna 2, the Luna 1 probe, which never reached the surface of the satellite, became the bearer of a special record. It became the first spacecraft to exceed the second space velocity. But apart from measuring solar wind parameters and delivering Soviet paraphernalia to the satellite, the primitive and static probe was unable to do anything. But the follower of the above-mentioned AMS, Luna 9, has achieved much greater success. She, first in the history of astronautics, February 3, 1966, made a soft landing on the surface of the celestial body, sending to Earth a picture of the lunar landscape. This feat made a huge contribution to science. Mercury, too, was a dark horse until a certain period, as it was not a priority for the superpowers. It still remains the least known planet of all the members of the solar system. The first probe that approached the planet at a record 320 kilometers was Mariner 10. It was his photos. The probe somehow miraculously managed to cover 45% of the surface of the celestial body, allowed to say that at the pole of hot Mercury, accumulate ice blocks. The activity of the second probe, which entered Mercurian orbit in 2008, was more fruitful. Messenger took thousands of images of the planet's surface, which allowed scientists to create a three-dimensional map of the celestial body. The spacecraft confirmed the presence of ice at the Mercurian poles and detected a significant shift in the magnetic field caused by unknown causes. But the most iconic feature of Mercury, multiple black spots of inhomogeneous structure and unclear origin, Based on this, astronomers suggest that the planet is not as simple as it may seem at first glance. In 2015, Messenger, like a fanatical kamikaze, collapsed on the surface of Mercury, leaving behind a crater 15 meters deep. And what about Venus, our silent neighbor, shrouded in a multi-kilometer layer of poisonous atmosphere? It too was not neglected, at different times to the planet sent several AMS, which with varying success photographed its sulfur rain-streaked surface. After unsuccessful attempts that resulted in the probes crashing, Venus 7 was the first to make a soft landing on the planet's soil. The AMS was launched in 1970 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, when 120 days later the device landed on Venus it transmitted information for 53 minutes, including 20 minutes on the surface. It was thanks to Venus 7 that mankind learned that on the celestial body reign monstrous 90 atmospheres, as in the depths of the Earth's ocean, and an unthinkable range of temperatures from 25 to almost 500 degrees Celsius. Black and white images of the planet were first taken by the Venus 9 probe, and color panoramic photos and recordings of Venusian sounds were sent to Earth by the Venus 13. 
Through the interference and howling winds, the noises made by the automatically bounced telephotometer covers can be clearly heard. Which member of the solar system is the most studied by mankind? It is, of course, Elon Musk's blue dream, Mars. Interplanetary stations have been sent to the Red Planet almost constantly since 1960. The first to land on the celestial body was the Soviet Mars 3 probe in 1971. True, the full house was short-lived, only a little more than 14 seconds. Perhaps the failure of the mission was caused by a dust storm of planetary scale, but the first color photo of Mars was taken on the approach. Four years later, the American Vikings managed much more. They even examined the Martian soil for the presence of organic life. The desired thing was not found, but the results of research and images were much more than in previous expeditions. In addition, the world was finally able to enjoy the expanded panoramas of the Red Planet. It should be said that Viking 2 was initially doomed to failure, which began with the landing. The device landed on a rock and, in addition, burned out the soil underneath it, which was later to be investigated. It worked until 1980, while Viking 1 remained in business for two more years and went out of business not by its own will, but because of a ridiculous error of a Space Center employee. What can be said about the planets of the outer solar system? After all, these objects are too far from Earth, if we take into account the development of modern technology. Nevertheless, several interplanetary vehicles have visited them, some in transit, others as permanent companions. First are Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11, which passed by Jupiter in 1974, 1975. They sent only a few low-resolution images back to Earth. But Galileo studied the giant more seriously, orbiting the planet from 1995 to 2003. It is the only orbiter that visited Jupiter's neighborhood for a long time. He carefully studied the windy atmosphere of the giant with the help of a descent module plunged 130 kilometers deep into the gas layers. Also, Galileo found traces of the fall on Jupiter comet shoemaker Levy and examined the satellites of the giant. In particular, on Europa for the first time, were found traces of subglacial ocean. This hypothesis is being developed to this day, although this idea was pushed by scientists still Voyager. Galileo found its teeth in the bottomless Jupiterian atmosphere, that is, literally, Bernard on the job. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are even farther away, so to them, Earth vehicles did not reach? Not so. Past these planets flew the legendary voyagers, which have now left the solar system and are heading to locations where only the all-seeing eyes of powerful telescopes can look. Previously, Voyager 2 has managed to detect on Triton a satellite of Neptune, bubbling geysers, rising hundreds of meters above the surface. But on the AMS, which studied Saturn, it is worth to dwell a little more. Cassini revealed the main mystery of weightless giant, how look and what its rings consist of, sending a lot of unique images. The spacecraft also took a closer look at a strange, geometrically perfect hurricane that has been raging for centuries at one of Saturn's poles. Cassini, in conjunction with the Huygens probe, first discovered vast methane lakes on Titan, a Saturnian satellite, and photographed its rocky and icy landscape. But the New Horizons probe, designed to study Pluto and Kuiper Belt objects in more detail, was the furthest into the solar system. For the first time, the spacecraft showed a panorama of the surface of Pluto, Charon, and some dwarf planets up close. But in 2026, 
The probe's fuel will be exhausted and the mission will end.